Welcome to the Todd Anthony Bell National Resource Center on the Amer African American Males 2016 Early Arrival Program. My name is Mark Reese, and I'm alongside my other ambassador, Jeff Green, and we will be your Masters of Ceremony for today. So I have been tasked with answering the question, what does the Bell National Resource Center mean to me? And uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm from Golden, Colorado, about 1,200 miles away from here. I went to a small Catholic high school in the south of Denver, and uh, I did not know a person when I got to Ohio State. Um, I went on a visit, fell in love, and uh, it turns out I uh, got a call from Dr. Bennett, I mean, excuse me, Dr. Moore, and said, hey, we, we would like you to be a scholarship winner, and we'd like you to come to Ohio State. And I was like, eh, I don't know, and uh, I ended up coming. It was the best decision of my life. But I didn't know anyone, so I got to campus, and the BNRC was awesome, because there's already a group of 60 guys who I could count on as my brothers, and uh, we really gelled over those three days. And uh, I think the crowning moment was when you walk into that first physics lecture of 250 kids, you know, they always say, sit in the front row, sit in the front row. First three and four rows are filled. And uh, one of the other participants, Kamari Wright, is over there yelling at the top of his lungs, over here, over here. And uh, we uh, actually had a group of four students study together through the whole semester. And we all passed that class when I think um, a lot of people did not. So it was a great experience. And uh, Jeff, just a quick question for you. Um, how was being a part of EAP beneficial to your collegiate career? And how have you utilized the Bell National Resource Center? Yeah, I remember my first day of class. Um, I felt like I had already been here for like, you know, a whole semester. Um, and it was because, you know, I already had a group of, you know, guys who I could eat with, who I could hang out with, who I could go hoop with. Um, and it made me feel really good. It made me feel a part of the campus already when people were just now getting their bearings. Um, and I can also attest to the connections that you make because um, EAP is going to uh, you know, really affect your first year in a beneficial way, but it's also going to affect your entire collegiate career. So, for example, um, you know, through EAP, I've made connections through different um, scholars programs, study abroad scholarships, um, and also a graduate school prep course that I just took this past semester. So, EAP affected me my first year and has continued to affect me all the way throughout my uh, collegiate career. I'd like to take this time now to introduce uh, Dr. James L. Moore III, who serves as the Executive Director for the Bell National Resource Program on the uh, African American Mail. And he is going to give our official welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, it's just a wonderful time. This is the time that is momentous, is, is never ending. It, you just don't ever forget this moment in time. Uh, some of us, how many in here, moms and dads, this is your first child that you've ever dropped off to college? Raise your hand. So I would imagine that there's some anxiety, um, much like when my parents dropped me off in 1990. Uh, to the point I didn't have high blood pressure and I, my blood pressure went up so high because I was going so far away from home. And my mom, I'm a country boy from the rural south and anybody who know anything about that, you grew up on a whole family village and this is the first time I've been away from the village. And so I would imagine it's exhilarating and it's quite frightening at the same time. What we try to do at the Bell National Resource Center is, is to build upon the successes that you've imparted in your child. Now, we recognize there, we have a mantra here, and you'll see on our young men's shirts, iron sharpens iron. Uh, we really believe that it's important that young men, particularly African-American males, to have a plethora of individuals that they can draw from. In many cases, most of us, even in my career, in my journey, many of us, we often find ourselves along this continuum, the first and the only in our journeys. And so we don't want our young men to be lonely in this journey because they're going places many of us have never been before. And the Olympics is another sign of individuals in our community going places, doing things that not many of us have ever done. But it doesn't mean that we couldn't do them. 
It just means that now we have the platform to do them. And so what we, what we say, not only is the iron sharpens iron, but we're trying to foster a, an ethos of excellence. Um, we want students to do better than better. We want students to minimally have a 3.0, minimally. And I just want to celebrate, because some people around the country say, well, why do we want to bring a group of young black males together? It's, and all you have to do is read the statistics in America, or read the newspaper, and you can understand why many of our young men have achieved in spite of the challenges. And I would imagine, as I learned being in this position since 2008, even young men who might come from major means, they still have challenges that people sometimes don't see their capability and their prowess of excellence that they've exuded throughout their journeys. At Ohio State, we're a little different than other institutions. We stole everything that Morehouse has to offer. Anybody was thinking about going to Morehouse in here? Right, that's good. You did a better situation. You, but you did good coming because now Morehouse called us uh, because we have a total of 400 last year, a total of 400 African American males who had a cumulative 3.0 or better. Let me say that again. Some of you all might say those numbers are small, <laughs> right? We have a total of 400 cumulative GPAs of 3.0 or better. I would argue there's not a university in the entire country with those kind of numbers. Now, because one of the things that you will see in your journey here, we want to connect opportunities with your aspirations. Many of you all already, just the fact that you, were mat you matriculated at The Ohio State University suggest that you have the intellectual ability to almost do anything that you want to do in life. However, we know some in here, let me see guys, raise your hand. Some of us in here, we didn't really study that hard. How many here? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Be honest. Raise them high. Now, see, one of the things that we try to express to our young men is that we're fostering, we're chasing excellence. We want you to be the best that you can possibly be. When we recommend that you might seek a tutor, it's not always because just because you didn't do well. It's because we want you to do exceptionally well. And the reality of it is, each and every year, you know, uh, we celebrate academic excellence in, at the Bell National Resource Center. And we celebrate, we have an academic recognition ceremony. And I'm still hopeful, even though last year, Ohio State produced its first black person that received the um, Rhodes Scholarship. The Rhodes Scholarship, the first in the history of this country, in, at our university. Now, I didn't, you know, I've been longing for one of my brothers to become a Rhodes Scholar. Because it, much of your life is going to be teaching. Because there's going to be people who think you can't do certain things. And you're going to show them every day that you can do it. But more importantly than showing others that you can do it, it's more important that you show yourself that you can be the best that you can possibly be. This year we have a total of 56 young men who's going to participate in this early arrival program. This early arrival program has nothing, it's not remedial, it's not to remedy things that you might not have received in your high school experience. It's all about retooling and recommitting ourselves to the mission. And the mission is for you to get not just a degree, but to obtain an education in which you are able to reach your dreams and aspirations. One of the things, another thing that we want you to be cognizant of, because you're going to be successful, 
and you're going to be very successful like many of our young men. We have some of our young men, they passed a CPA. We got CPAs. We got people who are moving up in the corporate ranks, taking, taking no prisoners, by, taking no, I mean, just doing exception well in, the, in their craft. And not only that, people are recognizing how successful we are, that now they come specifically come in to recruit you in the audience, just like our coach try to recruit players to play in the shoe. See, we want, to know, we want people to know that there's an ethos of excellence. And what makes this institution fine and grand is not bricks and mortar. It's the individuals who come and spend time at this institution who do well, so well, that we all marvel at their success. Now, moms and dads, I think you would appreciate this. We foster and we ingrain in their psyche that the first check goes to mom and dad. Uh, moms and dad, you want to clap on that one? <laughs> right, right. But we say the second check comes to the Todd Anthony Bell National Resource Center. <laughs> so I, I say this because no matter what, how successful we are, we always vulnerable of being shut down and put out of business. As you know, right now, are we, how many receive your book? How many here read the book? Right? See, we try to convey to our young men that knowledge will never come knocking on your door. You have to go get it. You can't say that I didn't learn this in my class or my high school or my parents didn't expose me or I didn't have X. The question is, how bad do you want it? And are you willing to utilize the center to advance your aspirations? The ones who do, one of the things he didn't say, Mark Reese. Mark Reese, I remember when he first came here, I didn't know he was going to come to Ohio State. When I made the phone call, he didn't really say anything. I told him it's his, this is probably the best day in his life that I was giving him a full ride. And he didn't say anything. And he said, OK, I'll call. <laughs> So I didn't think I was going to get him to come to Ohio State. And when he came, when they told me we finally got him to come to Ohio State, right before he came here, I think he passed his pilot license before he came here. So if we want to fly to Cleveland tomorrow, he could fly us to Cleveland. We have young men who got exceptional talents and abilities that go beyond the classroom. We hope to nurture those uh, skills and those talents within you. I close on this. Uh, is Mr. Smith in? No. I close on this. Is one person that I would like to say is probably one of the most influential person in the 21st century as it relates to educating black males. And his name, he's from my beloved home state, South Carolina. And his name is Dr. Benjamin E. Mays. How many have ever know who that know that name? If you ever been in Atlanta, you'll see this statue of this this very astute man. And some would say he kind of framed the Morehouse man identity. Dr. Mays says, whatever you do, you do it so good that no man dead, alive, or yet to be born can do it better. That's the level of excellence that we hope that you aspire to. That's the level of excellence that we're going to push you towards. I thank you, moms and dads, for choosing Ohio State. We hope to give you back a better person that is not only going to be influential in his own household, in his own community, but all across the world. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Robert Lee Solomon Esquire.
Robert Lee Solomon is the Assistant Vice Provost in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion here at The Ohio State University. He is a graduate of Lipscomb University and The Ohio State University Moritz College of Law. He began his legal career as an Assistant Attorney General for the State of Ohio. He served as the Franklin County Municipal Court Magistrate before joining The Ohio State University Moritz College of Law and Administration. During his tenure at the College of Law, he served as assistant to the dean, director of the moot court and lawyering skills program, senior assistant to the dean for administration and financial aid, and advisor to the Black Law Student Association, and as an adjunct professor focusing on evidence, trial advocacy, and appellate advocacy. He was also the chief diversity officer for the Moritz College of Law, directing the school's Office of Diversity and Inclusion. He has also served as the assistant United States attorney for the United States Department of Justice. In July 2015, he assumed the position of Assistant Vice Provost in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion for The Ohio State University. Solomon has also been active in the community, serving on various boards throughout the years, including the Equal Justice Foundation and the Columbus Academy. He also served on the Diversity Committee of the American Bar Association. He has also been active in the local bar as well, serving as the Chair of Law School Liaison Committee for the Columbus Bar Association. Solomon is President Emeritus of 100 Black Men of Central Ohio and is the Board Chair Emeritus of Afrocentric Personal Development Shop. His past honors have included being appointed by former Ohio Governor Ted Strickland to serve on the Ohio Ethics Commission in 2010 and also being selected by Congress to represent the district at the 2006 National African American Leadership Summit in Washington, D.C. He was also honored by his alma mater at Lipscomb University as Alumnus of the Year in 2006. Along with the Bell National Resource Center, which I'm a proud ambassador of, Professor Solomon has three other units in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion reporting to him. The Moral Scholars Program, the Young Scholars Program, and all other special programs. It is an honor to introduce to you Robert Lee Solomon, Esquire. Good afternoon. We want you to be awake and alive as we uh, embark upon this great opportunity. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the, just the outstanding work of Dr. James Moore. Uh, he has been a great friend on this campus, even though I've only been uh, with the uh, Office of Diversity and Inclusion for one year. Uh, we've been uh, connected uh, throughout my time when I served as uh, a dean at the, uh, the law school just across the street uh, from the union. And I will tell you that because I come from a law discipline, in some ways I'm always trolling for potential law students. So uh, I'll try to convert you, to, so, so, so be forewarned. Uh, I, I'd also just like to appreciate the outstanding work that's done by the uh, Bell National Resource Center. And, and, uh, and you probably met uh, or come in contact with members of the staff. Um, if you haven't, you will. Uh, certainly, you know Dr. Moore, and then there's uh, uh, Dr. Robert Bennett, uh, who's here, uh, Dan Thomas, and Ty Cornute, who um, just work tirelessly to make these things happen. Uh, we have uh, some outstanding uh, graduate assistants that work in the office as well. And certainly, uh, the queen that keeps it all going, uh, Ms. Melvina Smith. So uh, they are just an outstanding team. And I'm really uh, honored to have uh, the opportunity to work with them and uh, to oversee the work that they do. I, I have two purposes. Uh, one, certainly, uh, is to share a few thoughts with you. But the other uh, is to, uh, to welcome you and greet you on behalf of uh, our Vice Provost, Sharon L. Davies. Uh, and she is the Chief Diversity Officer for The Ohio State University, and she's the Vice Provost uh, for the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, and she sh holds other positions, the Executive Director for the Kerwin Institute for the Study of Race and Ethnicity. She's on the law faculty, so the list goes on and on. Uh, she was not able 
uh, to be here today, so I, I stand in her stead uh, to welcome you on behalf of the office. Uh, but you will see her around. Uh, she is committed uh, to uplifting and strengthening uh, black men, and, uh, and that's exciting. And, and, and I speak for all the men here know, to say that we would be nowhere without our sisters and support. So uh, we value it, and it is certainly great to us. So my goal this afternoon uh, is to share a, a few thoughts uh, about the journey that lies before you today. You know, first of all, you are to be applauded for your focus and determination and sheer strong will. You have had the wisdom and vision to attend the BNRC Early Arrival Program. Now, uh, either that or your mama or grandma or daddy or big mama or auntie, papa, or somebody said, boy, you go into this whether you want to or not. Either way, um, it's a good thing that you're here and you had the wisdom to respect that person that had that great influence over your life. So however you got here today, you're in the right place. Now, being here is the first step in a pattern of wise behavior to take full advantage of every resource that is available to you which can contribute to your success. You've heard the discussion already about excellence and that, that's where we're headed. So whether you are like me and many others, a first generation college student, or like others who are continuing a legacy, a strong legacy of educational excellence, you are now setting yourself up to thrive. And that's what's important. You know, there's a story uh, about a business person uh, who consulted an attorney for legal advice. So one day this business person was having lunch with a friend uh, and recounted that experience. Why did you spend your hard earned money for a lawyer, asked the friend. The law books in his office contain every answer you could ever want or need. Why didn't you just read the right book and find out the answer for yourself? It would have saved you a lot of money. That's true, replied the business person. But the difference is the lawyer knew which book and on what page the answer was on. L let me put it to you another way. I saw uh, an Instagram photo of a mug uh, the other day which read, please do not confuse your Google search with my law degree. <laughs> I think that about sums it up. So if you will, my message today is entitled, knowledge <laughs> is power. <laughs> knowledge is power. So your journey through the Ohio State University, and hopefully you will learn that we all say the Ohio State University, is designed to increase your knowledge both inside and outside of the classroom. There's an African proverb that says, he who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool, shun him. He who knows not and knows that he knows not is a child, teach him. He who knows and knows not that he knows is asleep, awaken him. But he who knows and knows that he knows is wise, follow him. If you do not remember anything else about this message today, I want you to remember three major points related to the notion that knowledge is power. In order to obtain that power, I believe first, you must know yourself, second, you must know your surroundings, and third, you must know what you don't know. So now, if you will, so it'll sink in, I want you to repeat after me. Know yourself. Know, yourself. know, your, surroundings. know your surroundings. Know what you don't know. know, you don't know. 
That's right. All right. Know yourself, know your surroundings, and know what you don't know. And I'll, I'll talk about that for a minute. So first, the idea of knowing yourself. Now, I have a subtitle for that one. Uh, and, and I think that subtitle is about utilizing your strengths and attacking your weaknesses as you get to know yourself. If you listen to the US media, you would think that there is nothing good about the state of black males in this country, or even in the world. Now, while I know there are a myriad of disparities that exist for within the black community from educational opportunity to economic opportunity to the criminal justice system, uh, to employment and unemployment and beyond. However, there is good news that we don't often hear. And, and, and I think Dr. Moore is highlighting some of that good news. Now, based upon our last census, here's some things that you may not hear every day. Nine out of 10 black people, 12 or older, currently do not use illicit drugs. 93% do not suffer from substance abuse issues. Seven out of 10 black fathers, ages 15 to 44, who live with their children, bathe, dress, diaper, and help their child use the toilet daily, which is higher than other rates. There are 59% more black men in post-secondary education than in jail. Black fathers ages 15 to 44 had the highest rates of helping children with homework and taking them to and from activities. More than half of young black male graduates from high school in 2010 earned their diploma in four years. Now, based upon our most recent census, it also showed that 32.3%, that's one in three black males ages 18 to 24, were enrolled in college. Now the list could go on, but I just wanted to make sure that we have a balanced context for what's going on in our world. Without question, we are overrepresented in the criminal justice system and in American prisons. That is a problem. However, while we are focusing on solving that problem, I don't want us to forget about the bright, talented, and capable young brothers who thrive on college campuses every day, just like each of you. So to know yourself, you really must know your history. You must know where you come from. You must know the facts and not rely on sound bites or Facebook. Snapchat, or Instagram for your knowledge. I encourage you to investigate, research, and confirm the things that become part of your knowledge base. And you'll learn how to do that even more and more while you're here on this campus. However, knowing yourself also require, requires uh, learning to identify your strengths and your weaknesses. Now, once you do that, then you can maximize those strengths and you can attack those weaknesses. However, you must be honest with yourself when you make those assessments. I challenge each of you to take some time to write down a list of your strengths and weaknesses and to create a plan for addressing them. You know, if you want to be a doctor but are struggling with science, that's a problem. If you want to be an engineer but are struggling with math, that's a problem. If you want to be a lawyer and you're struggling with writing, that's a problem. It doesn't mean that you can't overcome those problems, but you do need to address them aggressively. Tutoring, study groups, extra time studying, meeting with the professor after class, etc. You do whatever it takes you do absolutely whatever it takes to slay that beast. And if you're honest enough to know your own weaknesses, you can overcome any obstacle that's in your way. You should also have a strategy for enhancing your strengths, of course. Seek ways to strengthen what you do well. 
Each one of you has a great strength and ability. That's why you're here. You're talented. You're capable. You know, if you're great with languages, perhaps you lead a study group with students who are studying the language or volunteer to work with students who are indigenous from the country or the area of the world where that language is found. Do a study abroad trip so that you can become immersed in that particular language. You know, if you're a math whiz, then help your brother who's struggling with math. Break it down to him in a way that only another brother can do. He might be able to help you with your English class or your speech class or your psychology class. Iron sharpens iron. My point is, know yourself and be honest in the process. When you do, you will thrive and nothing can stop you. Second, you have to know your surroundings. Know your surroundings. Now, uh, the subtitle for Know Your Surroundings I call Listen, 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 Watch, Shut Up, and Listen. <laughs> that, that, because I think that captures it. You know, my, my constant refrain to my own children, my own college-age children, is to pay attention to what's going on around you. Now, I added the term shut up because knowledge has never been known to enter the head through an open mouth. Our creator gave us two ears, two eyes, and one mouth. We should take the hint and listen at least twice as much, watch twice as much as we might run our mouths from time to time. It is vitally important for you to be aware of what's going on around you. As a practical matter, for instance, this university will communicate with you through the email system. You must read your emails. And, 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 you, and I don't know if you've gotten into that habit already through high school or whether you've heard about it, but we hear this term all the time. Students are notorious for not reading emails. But if you don't, you will miss out on many opportunities if you fail to pay attention to the emails in this very basic way. You know, I have a good friend um, who is the executive director of a nonprofit uh, where I was on the board, and we worked together for, um, um, as uh, members of um, 100 Black Men of Central Ohio. And, and he used to always have this mantra when we were negotiating with people, or we were trying to get grants or whatever we're dealing with, and his mantra was, don't leave any money on the table. Now, you know, what, what he would say now, nah, don't leave no money on the table. That's, that, that's how he put it. Now, you all understand what that means. He says, don't leave any money on the table. His point was, take advantage of every opportunity. So my point to you is, if you don't read your emails, if you don't listen to your professors, if you don't listen to what your colleagues are discussing, if you don't stay up on current events, you are in fact leaving money on the table. You are in fact leaving opportunities that are open to you. So I'm telling you now, don't leave money on the table. And really that's what paying attention to your surroundings is all about. That's what knowing what's going on is all about. You must be willing to learn from others, and there is something to learn from everyone. Your professors are certainly the obvious sources of knowledge, but your classmates are as well. You are subject to learn as much from volunteer work, dorm conversations, student organizations, work study, etc., as you are in the classroom. Be a lifetime student and know that this process begins with listening. My final point is this, know what you don't know. Now, um, you might ask yourself, how can I know what I don't know? That doesn't make any sense. Well, <laughs> my subtitle for that is to ask questions. <laughs> I submit that you know what you don't know by asking questions. You know, one of the major differences between college and high school is that the responsibility for making sure that you learn totally shifts from the teacher to the student. 
There will be a few exceptions, but for the most part, no one is going to be chasing behind you to make sure you understand what's going on in class. In fact, you might be able to blow off your class all semester long, and your professors will not likely give it a second thought until they write down a failing grade. Now, how much you get out of this education is primarily up to you. Now, I will note that being a part of the BNRC does mean that you are in a unique position because you will have people who really care about what's going on for you, who are invested in your success, and they will check in on you from time to time. There will be opportunities for you to learn and to grow and to, to offer what you need to help. But even with this unique resource at your disposal, you are still in the driver's seat. You're the one who is still responsible. It will always be up to you to ask questions so that you can learn what you need to know. I always say that the only dumb questions are the ones that go unasked. So to my brilliant black brothers, I applaud you and I salute you. I'm already impressed with who you are, but I'm even more enamored with the men you will become. Today is a new beginning for each of you. Be confident, be strong, be humble, and be tireless in everything that you do. Tom Peters and Nancy Austin wrote the following in their book, Passion for Excellence. They said, leadership is a sacrifice. It is self-denial, it is love, it is fearlessness, and it is humility. And it is the perfectly disciplined will. This is also the distinction, the distinction between great and little people. The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. The role of the leader is to enhance, transform, coach, care, trust, cheerlead. The activities of the leader are to educate, sponsor, coach, counsel, using appropriate timing, tone, consequences, and skill. As I stand here this afternoon, I see leaders in here today. And I see you leading today and tomorrow. Go forth and lead, my brothers, because we need you in this fight for justice and equality, and we need you to be prepared. And I believe that you've taken that first step, and I believe that you are in the right place, at the right time, under the right circumstances to change this world. I do. So as I prepare to take my seat, I want to say two things. The, the, the first is I hope to see you around the Hale Center where uh, the BNRC is headquartered and the Office of Diversity and, and Inclusion is located. I hope to see you around there from time to time uh, and as part of all the programs that will be offered for your benefit. But you've got to take advantage of them. The other thing I want you to do is to make sure, particularly for those parents and loved ones and family members that are dropping you off, um, make sure that you tell them thank you because no one gets here on their own. Each one of us stands on the shoulders of somebody else who sacrificed for us, who loved us, and cared for us. So don't let them leave without saying thank you and I love you. And if they left, text them, call them, do whatever you need to do. If they're not here, make sure you do it because we must give our flowers while we live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Solomon, for that message. Um, and I want to just challenge everybody to really take heed on the information that was just presented before us, um, because I can attest personally um, on how beneficial that will be for you know, our entire collegiate career. And I'm sure it will be just as beneficial even after college once we step into the real world. I would now like to introduce Dr. Robert Bennett III, who serves as the Special Assistant 
to the executive director in the Bell National Resource Center, and also the program specialist in education abroad. OH. I -O. That's how we usually start things off. So just so the freshmen that are in here, you can be hearing a lot until you graduate. Uh, I'm also a Morehouse man, so I kind of take a uh, special word to James saying that we uh, mock OSU now. But I'm taking a stride because I work for the Bell Resource Center. And the goal of having 400 3.0s uh, was something that we were trying to strive for the last three years. And to finally get there, if there are any Cleveland Cavaliers fans, you know what that feels like. Now, that'll be the last time I give the Cavaliers any props. <clears throat> Y'all can stop clapping. Uh, but I do want to close this out and recognize uh, everybody who, who made this possible. Uh, Daniel Thomas, who is our program manager, is not here. His grandmother passed last night. Uh, and so we're kind of taking up that mantle for him. So please keep him in your thoughts. I also want to recognize uh, James, my big brother, uh, Dr. James Moore. Uh, Ty Cornu, who's a program coordinator. He's been with the Bell Resource Center since day one. Natasha Willis and Kimberly Holloway, who are our graduate assistants, please stand. Thank you. And Ms. Melvina, is she here today? Is she in here? She's probably in the office right now, but we, we're kind of the core of the Bell Resource Center. So you all will see a lot of us. I also want to recognize our, our campus collaborators and support staff. A lot of y'all from Student Life, could you please stand? So that's you four brothers, you two here. I know I see Graham and Edmund. Please stand. Are there any other Jackie, ODI staff? Thank you. Make sure that, we, that you all connect with them as well. I also want to recognize our ambassadors. Uh, you have seen them with the nice polo shirts that they're wearing. They're here in the corner. I want to recognize them individually as well. Jeff Green, just raise your hand. They already seen you, Jeff. Mark Reese. Jesse Uguebo, Demario Webb, Kyler Wilson, Mo Lathan, Trudy File, Che Jackson, Thomas Mingesha, Brett Mitchell, Jamal Mohammed, and my, my favorite name, Commodore Williams, <laughs> Nemeka Anene. Zaid Hightower, Bryce Isaac, and Jonathan Robinson. That concludes our program, our early Robert opening session. Family and guests, please stay for the panel. That will be at 2.30 to 3.45. And students, you will make your way to Hale Hall with the ambassadors. Again, thank you. <laughs>